Hey guys, Twiglets2 here. In this video, we're going to analyze everything we know about the upcoming World War II RTS, Men of War 2. What content will be in the game? Why was it delayed to 2023? Will it just be a copy-paste from Assault Squad 2? How will it compare to Gates of Hell Ostfront? I've scoured the internet for everything we know to answer these questions and more. First up, some quick fire questions and a quick recap. The Men of War series started in 2004 with Soldiers, Heroes of World War II. Many other games have been released since, but it's most likely that Assault Squad 2 is the Men of War game you will have heard of, which has a loyal player base and several mods to keep them coming back. Gates of Hell Ostfront is kind of related to Men of War, but they are separate. If you like that game, you should consider Men of War 2 when it releases. The game was originally slated for release in 2022, but with no set date. It was recently delayed into 2023, and we are still awaiting a precise release date. It's worth bearing in mind that the developers are based in Ukraine, and they had to suspend development at the end of February 2022 for two months, for obvious reasons. Aside from the obvious Ukraine issues, the developers say that the game was delayed primarily so they could add a third campaign for the Third Reich which has been requested time and again by the Men of War community. We can otherwise assume they want to polish the game too. The factions in the game are Americans, Germans and Russians. This is where some, or even most players, have their first complaint, as Assault Squad 2 also included the Japanese and the Commonwealth. So having only three factions feels like somewhat of a step backwards for the franchise. This is especially noticeable given that games such as Steel Division 2 and Gates of Hell Ostfront are going out of their way to bring you nations that aren't usually included in World War II games, such as Finland and Italy. But perhaps, like those games, we'll see other nations appear as part of a DLC in the future. The game will take place on both the western and eastern fronts of the war in Europe, in the absence of Japan, I think we can safely rule out anything in the Pacific, we will see the Normandy landings and fighting in France, as well as Operation Barbarossa, and many more. So now we know the basics, let's look at the content that will actually be in the game. Firstly, we have two campaigns, one for the Russians and one for the Americans. However, as previously mentioned, the game has been delayed to 2023, primarily so they can include a third campaign, for the Third Reich. We can expect large battles, but also stealthy ones like you would find in the Commando series. It makes me wonder if we'll see a skip stealth section option at the beginning of a mission that we can get right to the fighting, like you can in Assault Squad 2. They've also mentioned there will be dynamic campaigns, which are presumably separate to the normal campaigns. In these, you will lead your own division in historic battles as part of a specific war operation. Over time, you can improve and upgrade your army, gaining more advanced equipment and capabilities along the way. This sounds a lot like the dynamic campaign we see in Gates of Hell Ostfront, and perhaps a bit like the Army General mode in Steel Division 2, so check those out if you want to get a feel for what the dynamic campaign may be like. So nothing too surprising or unique in the campaign or dynamic campaigns, but the developers have confirmed that every single mission will be playable in co-op with up to four friends, so five of you in total. If they manage to pull that off, it's going to be very interesting, as adding co-op to anything is almost always well received. Each player will specialise in a certain area such as artillery support or tanks, and the mission will adapt to the number of players, so everyone has their role and depends on each other to shore up their weaknesses. I definitely like the idea of being artillery support, supporting an offensive by blowing the enemy to smithereens, then running and crying for my allies to support me when our opponents threaten my artillery with their infantry. Good times. Best of all, you can call in your own reinforcements, which will be a godsend to those who play Assault Squad 2, where the reinforcement system in co-op is a bit clunky. I can't imagine a bit of skirmish against the AI is going to be groundbreakingly different to what you would expect. However, it will be interesting to see how smart or dumb the AI is, and it's nice that this time around you don't have to buy a DLC to play against the AI. 
Yes, that was genuinely a feature of Assault Squad 2. They have said there will be challenge maps as well, so we may see something similar to Iron Harvest where you try to hold out for as long as possible against waves of enemies or perhaps just completing a challenge as quickly as possible. Who knows, but it sounds like a nice little addition on the side. The multiplayer is where things start to really get interesting. Men of War 2 Arena was a separate free-to-play multiplayer version of Men of War, which was closed down on the 30th of September 2021. It has essentially evolved into the multiplayer portion of Men of War 2, so searching for Men of War Arena videos will give you a decent idea of what Men of War 2 will look like. It features a frontline mechanic, which is similar to Steel Division 2, and you also choose regiments to fight, which include preset units. You can also change the default units in the regiment, but only with units you've unlocked in the tech tree, which presumably was a bit of a grind when it was a free-to-play game. You fight alongside several other players, again, similar to a big Steel Division 2 match, and hope that your specialism, such as entrenched infantry or support weapons, will complement your allies and play accordingly. Although it ultimately ended up closing down so they could concentrate on Men of War 2, let's hope they learned a few lessons from their time with Arena that will benefit the Men of War 2 multiplayer. And given there's very little gameplay footage out there, taking a look at Arena is better than nothing. We don't have a cost so far. It wouldn't surprise me if it came in at 40 to $45, but we shall have to wait and see. Assault Squad 2 was very much zoomed in with a focus on infantry and tanks, but the trailer has made it very clear that airstrikes, bombing runs and other off-map support will be perfectly normal in Men of War 2. Indeed, if you check out the arena gameplay, you'll see that airstrikes were already implemented. You'll be able to disable particular sections of a tank, such as tracks, and even individual crew members. So Men of War 2 has the sort of detail we've come to expect in that respect. There will always be a risk with Men of War that any new iteration is very much a copy and paste job of the previous games. And this is a genuine concern that the community has. The graphics in the trailers don't look hugely more detailed than Assault Squad 2, but we have to remember it's still early days. To find out for sure, we will have to wait and see, but there will be 45 battalions and over 300 vehicles for us to sink our teeth into. I'm pleased to report that the game has a fully destructible environment, including buildings, of course. It also looks like we have different weather conditions, though it's not clear if the weather changes dynamically during a game or you can just decide to play the same map as snow covered or raining, etc. We also have night maps, but again, it's unclear if this changes over time or is a preset option. I'm also pleased to report we have trenches, which the base version of Assault Squad 2 didn't have without mods. You could say it's catching up with Gates of Hell Lost Front there. For such a complex series of games, Men of War has never been great at teaching you how all the little subtle mechanics work. The learning curve has been rather large in the past, which has surely put off potential new players. So will Men of War 2 have a decent tutorial? Will it be woven into a story mission like we've seen with other RTS games of late? I don't know, but I bloody well hope so. I briefly mentioned a frontline mechanic earlier, which is a new one for Men of War 2, so let's go into more detail on that. Steel Division 2 players will be familiar with the concept. There's a red and blue line showing what your territory is. You move it by pushing infantry forward. Tanks can't move it. They can only support the infantry that are moving it. If you watch some of the Men of War 2 arena videos, you'll be able to see it in action but there will be certain things you can only do in your territory. For example, it will affect the deployment of your troops. One of the USPs for Men of War is the ability to directly control your troops, whether it's a tank or an individual soldier. I can confirm this feature is back in Men of War 2, and it's now called Direct Vision. I'm not sure Direct Vision is any different to Direct Control, 
but I hope it's a little less clunky than in the previous Men of War games and also Gates of Hell Ostfront. It's fun to do, albeit distracting at times, but it would be nice if it was more refined, especially when controlling infantry. I look forward to seeing how direct vision develops compared to previous versions. The game is going to have full mod support with special level design and a modding toolset, which I know will be a big relief to many of you. It sounds like it will be possible to port mods from previous Men of War titles too, though I assume some jiggery pokery will be required for the new features. For Assault Squad 2, the Rob's Realism and Valor mods, among others, are pretty much the reason the game is still popular all these years later. So you'd like to think the developers have paid attention to this and designed the new game accordingly. So how will Men of War 2 ultimately compare to games such as Company of Heroes, Gates of Hell Ostrand, and Steel Division 2? From everything I've seen so far, if those three games were in a triangle, the game would sit somewhere in the middle. The most obvious comparison being Gates of Hell Ostfront, but they've definitely incorporated features that will appeal to Steel Division 2 players. But there are rumours that the gameplay is moving slightly away from the detailed Men of War experience we're used to, and more towards the arcadey style of Company of Heroes, if only a little. I've been chatting to the developer who said they'll provide me with an early access version of the game, which I hope to be able to share with you all if they'll let me. So watch this space if that sounds interesting. There is no doubt that Men of War 2 is an ambitious game. If they can achieve most of what they've set out to do and to make it work in a cohesive lump, the game will surely earn its place among its peers and has a good chance of tempting Assault Squad 2 players along with the other World War II RTS games we have to choose from. There is, however, a risk that they fail utterly to deliver and there simply isn't much reason to play the game when we have so many other options available to us. We won't know for sure until we get our hands on a copy of the damn thing, but for me, if they can give us a decent sized and varied campaign, if they can get the co-op right and improve the direct control mechanic so it puts you right into the thick of the action, this game might just be one of the best World War II RTS experiences money can buy. Maybe. If Tom AI doesn't ruin the whole thing, you know what I'm talking about. The eyes of the world are upon you. If you enjoy strategy, RTS, World War II, then we're going to get on very well, so do consider checking out my other videos. Leave comments as I always reply to them, and let me know what you're looking forward to, or are nervous about, when it comes to Men of War 2. See ya.